Hey guys, it is Carl Brown from GuitarLessons365.com. Gonna do one that's been requested a lot lately. People have just been bugging me about it. So we're gonna do It So Easy uh, by Guns N' Roses, of course. Probably one of my favorite Guns N' Roses riffs, uh, this main riff. It's very ominous sounding, I like it a lot. Anyway, so I hope you guys are gonna enjoy this one. We're gonna go through the, the whole track there, cover slashes, solo. Um, the outro solo, I'm not going to, you know, when they're doing those outro chorus things and they're soloing on underneath and you can't really hear it, I don't really generally transcribe that kind of stuff. But I will show you a lot of uh, the, the scale choices that he's using there so you can kind of do your own thing, which he does. He always just kind of improvises something there anyway. All right, so but for the most part, I'm going to take care of all the uh, rhythm guitar parts and uh, the main solo. So. Uh, we are, before I get into it, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, ring the notification bell so you know when I release a new video, and check out my Guitar Academy at guitarlessons365.com. It's got all my guitar courses covering a bunch of stuff. We've got a great community there. So come join us. Link's in the description. All right, let's get going. So we are tuned down to half step um, as per protocol with Guns N' Roses. So that's just E flat tuning. So just E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, B flat, E flat. I'll put the notes in the description to make sure you, you got that, but it's just basic E flat tuning. All right, and now we have that cool little bass intro for the song, and then we hear some, this comes. And then we have some problems. Launch anything into that. So first, we just have this E power chord. Oh, so you're going to hit that on the up beats. So, so you hit it and kill it. So over that we have this. So that's going to be the harmonic at the 12th fret of the D and the G together. And then play the harmonic, let that continue to ring. And then play the harmonic at the, on the B string, the 12th fret on the B string. So we have this. And then we do uh, pretty much the same thing again. We're going to start with the two uh, harmonics on the D and the G together. And then play the 12th fret harmonic again and then back to the 12th fret of the G. So with this. So all together. And that takes us into the main riff. So this part really is, uh, you see slash, so sometimes a will You play the power chord up here, sometimes I'll do it down here. Um, but for the most part, I think they're both doing it the kind of mostly the same way, which is just like this. All right, so that starts with the B flat power chord off the uh, the first fret of the A string, then over to the G power chord off the third fret of the low E. And then you play this E power chord, uh, however way you want to do it, you want, really want to get, make sure you can still hear, can access these two strings here. The high E and the B there. So you hit that low E chord and then, so the first time you do it, it's kind of like this. So I go, so I hit that, so the strings with an upstroke, and then a couple of uh, full muted hits on the low E power chord, and then back to that chord, with the, the two notes, the open B and the high E. So have this. Now the next time is a little bit trickier. There's a quick little down up down in there. So it goes. So it's kind of really muted, and then you hit those two chords, the two strings again. So it's kind of tricky. So this. Do it again like that. 
And then the last time you can play kind of like the first time. Kind of just go, kind of, and just like that. So they're both kind of just doing the same riff, playing it the same way. And then when they branch off here is at the chorus. So Slash during the chorus plays this. All right, so this is kind of very dissonant chord that's in there. It's on the recording, but it's very, very low in the mix. That's why you're probably like, what is that? So it's, it's, it's there, uh, but as when it has that with it, the, the other guitar that's layering with it is actually louder in the mix. So you're hearing most of a, a, a B natural, not a B flat there, but that cuts out, it kind of creates that quality. So. Uh, but Slash, when you pl he plays it live, he does do the... You can actually hear it better. So we have this. So we had this power chord of the fifth fret a couple times. And down to three, five, six, five, three. Then the open E string. So you can just hit the open E and come up here and grab the chord. So that's the seventh fret on the A, eighth on the D. And ninth on the G. Evil. So it is. Repeat. So. And maybe the last time without doing the dissonant chord. Do I hear? Just a regular E power chord, so. Now, over that Slash's chorus riff, we have Izzy doing this. So that's just the double stops here at the fifth fret there on the B and the high E. Down to the third fret on the B and the high E. Then back to the fives, and then you can pick them again. And we do a slide up and back down to up to six and back down to five. So down to the threes real quick. And then the open B and the open high E. Let's try this. Repeat that a few times. So four times total there. And then we go back to that main riff. So same thing as before. Same chor two chorus riffs together as before. And then we get to this little cool little clean uh, arpeggiated section, which looks like this. So. Now, so that's pretty simple. Uh, we're gonna play this second fret there on the low E string, and then the open A and the open D. So first, you're gonna pick across those three strings in that order. So I just picked across those three strings twice. And then uh, the third time through, you're just gonna play the sixth and the uh, or the low E string, and then the D. D strings, way this. So that's the pattern. And now they're gonna do that same pattern now on the G chord, which is the third fret there on the low E, and the second fret on the A, and the open D string. So you have the same picking. Now the next chord is gonna be the second fret there on the A, a string, fourth fret on the D, and then the open G. Um, that is uh, now going to be same picking pattern, but now it's starting on the A string. So you're going to pick the A, D, and the G. So the 
same pattern, but just on three different string sets. And then they're going to end it with open A string, second fret on the D, and open G. So we have this. Then we have this riff that happens at the 1 minute and 17 second mark. Sounds like it comes right out of a Megadeth song. Sounds like this. All right, so pretty cool. So So we're going to start with uh, down up, down up on the low E, heavily muted, palm muted. And they're gonna hammer five to seven on the eight. So like this. Then you go back into another down up, down up, hit four, um, kind of alternate pick on the low E. Do that hammer again, and then just two hits on the low E. So a quick little down up, and then the hammer again. So like this. So it's pretty quick. And then towards the end, just kind of hold on that seven. And then we have the, um, that takes us to uh, the bridge. Well, I call it the bridge, looks like this. All right, so that's just gonna be one part, and then we have one that does an octave blow. So we're gonna start here at this D power chord, the fifth part of the A string. Then, then up to 10, nine, seven. And then we're gonna have this little, little change in there, which is the seventh part on the D and the G back to the ninth fret there on the D and the G. Let's try this. Repeat. The last time you just kind of hold that E, that takes us to the solo there. Now like I said, there's uh, another guitar that's going to doing this. So that's that power chord, same one, but then off the low G power chord, third fret, second fret, down that E power chord. And you end those, kind of go up, add those top two strings in there to it. So that goes with that. All right, now we have the solo. So underneath the solo, we have a little bit different, a variation on the uh, kind of that main riff, the main verse riff. And so underneath the solo, we have this. All right, so that's that same B flat chord to G chord. But when it gets to the E power chord, just kind of chug on it a little bit, kind of muted. One, two, three, four. And then we're gonna do this. That third fret there on the low E, back to the power chord, back to the third fret on the low E, back to the power chord, so we have this. All right, so that's what's going on just four times there. Um, um, and then we have Slash is solo. So let me play through, it's a quick little solo. It's really cool though, it's got some really cool licks in it. Um, so let me play through it real quick for you, then I'll show you how to play it phrase by phrase. <laughs> Hmm. 
So I was going to start here with the um, bend at the 17th fret. It's a step and a half bend on the B string. So you play that and then bring the bring the bend back down and then and then he does a kind of a, a bigger bend on that when he collects the G string with it. That's why it kind of gives it that kind of warbly sound. Um, and then we have this. So that's going to be. So start with a bend there at the uh, 15th fret on the B string. Then we'll go up to the high E, 12th fret. Then pull off 15 to 12 on the uh, B string into a bend at the 14th fret on the G. Then you're going to release that bend. Then you release the bend down to the, um, and then pull off to 12. Hammer back to 14. Over to 12 on the B string. Back to that 12th fret on the G. You can bend that note a little bit if you want. Over to 14 on the D twice. So we have this. One more time. This next lick is pretty cool. So we have this. That's going to be 14 on the D, then 12, 14 on the G. Over to 12 on the B string, then 15 on the G, and then back to 12 on the B. Kind of rotate between the two a couple times. So three times there. Then you play 14 on the G, over to 12 on the B string. Over to 12 on that G string, over to 14 on the D, and then up to that 15th fret there on the B string. From there we have this. So that's a, he starts a little, kind of a half step pre-bend at the 14th fret. So you're at that 15th there, just now go uh, a half step back from that with your middle finger or whatever. So then you do a half step pre-bend and then release it. So, so you do that three times. Back to that 12 on the G. 14 on the D, then hit it one more time, and into a bend at the 15th fret of the B. So the whole solo really slow. So from there we go uh, back to the verse, same verse riff, uh, same chorus riff, same little clean riff we had. That's little... So we act, we do that, but then we come in with like kind of a, a power chord version of that clean riff uh, towards the end. Alright, so that's coming in, that leads us into the outro. So those chords real quick. So this was like, as just we had the clean part, right? So 
that's where we're at here. So we had that power chord on the second fret of the low E. Then the open G power chord. So it's just a G major chord, but you're gonna be muting the A string there with the bottom of your chord. Except a G power chord. And then we have a B power chord off the second fret of the A string. And then the open A power chord. And the repeat. All right, so then we have basically um, this kind of outro solo, outro chorus type of thing. So instead of showing you everything that's going on here, I really just wanted to talk about the scale choices he's using, and then you can do your own thing with it. And then we have, we have this little riff in here too. So first, we're going to be playing it over that riff. We have the, So the scales that he's using are E minor pentatonic. So you can kind of do, do your E minor pentatonic shapes down here as well. But he also obviously turns it into a blues scale a lot by adding that. So an E minor blues. All right, and then um, so you also see him in that solo. So that's that blues note. And, but you'll also see him add a C sharp in there, which makes it an E Dorian scale. So you'll hear. So you saw that in the main solo, but he continues using some Dorian licks in the outro solo as well. So that whole section, you can really just... Kind of something like that. And then we, it leads us into this little ending riff. So the little riff right there is kind of based off the E blues scale as well. So we have E minor blues. So we have uh, eight, seven, five on the uh, D string. Over to seven on the A. And then we basically take that all down an octave. So that's six on the low E. So all, I think it's a low E here now. Six, five, three, into the E power chord. So So just, you can just kind of improvise with those scale choices that I was talking about. And if you're just the rhythm guy. And you just end it like with that E power chord. All right, so it's a really fun song to play. Got some killer riffs in it and a nice short solo. And then, like I said, I recommend you just kind of do your own thing for that outro solo. It's kind of low in the mix anyway, so it's kind of hard to hear. It's just do your own thing. Use an E minor pentatonic, E minor blues, and E Dorian, um, and you'll, uh, you can have fun for days over that really killer riff. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you again soon for guitarlessons365.com.